Show, go a little bit further, show everyone, let, us, let people see that uh, I'm not alone here. Okay. You can show also those tracks, just those tracks there. There. Okay. So, come, come close. Just come close so that uh, people can hear what I'm, what I'm saying. Okay. So, very good. You can see my, my handsome face there. Yes. <laughs> very good. So, uh, I am, I'm not going to, to, to say exactly where I am, but uh, the issue is, I've got uh, these gentlemen here. These are drivers coming from, um, uh, some are coming from Zambia. They are local, local uh, citizens. They are drivers. We also have um, some drivers coming from Zimbabwe and we have drivers coming from uh, Malawi. These people work for a company which is owned by a Chinese uh, called uh, uh, Kevin uh, Yang or what is it? Uh, Peng Yang. I don't know which one. These guys, you know, they, they like to play with names. Uh, Peng Yang, Kevin Yang, I don't know. But anyway, the issue is that this Peng Yang has registered this breakfast here in Zambia and in South Africa. Now, as usual, the fashion of Chinese, they like, you know, to do things underhand and evade tax in most cases. So what he has done, he has registered a company here in Zambia and he has employed drivers. Then in South Africa, he has registered the same company and he owns trucks. So you can imagine the situation that we have is that in Zambia, that is where, in Zambia, Malawi, Zimbabwe, that is where he has the drivers. In South Africa, he has a company which owns the trucks. But he's the same guy, it's the same Kelvin uh, Young. Now, what is the issue? The issue is that these people here have been here for about 42 days. They have just been here. Why have they been here? They have been here because, as you remember, the issue of xenophobia in, in South Africa. South Africans don't want foreign drivers to be driving the South African trucks. So you can imagine this guy has got workers coming from Zimbabwe, coming from Malawi, coming from Zambia, driving uh, South African trucks. When you go to South Africa, you are coming from another country, you are not South African, driving a South African truck, you are in trouble. Some of them have been killed. I think we have seen on social media whereby, whereby uh, trucks have been banned and people shot them, shot at. So the situation is that these people can't drive. They can't go into South Africa with these trucks. They can't because of the risk that is there. So they came to an agreement. Okay, they packed these trucks. They can't go to South Africa. So they packed them here. Some of the trucks are in, uh, is it in Kong uh, Congo, isn't it? Some of them are in Chingolai. Yeah. Toto, Toto, we are talking about how many drivers? 300 and what? 350 drivers. We are talking about 350 drivers who have been employed. But they can't go into South Africa. The trucks have, they have kept the trucks here so that they can resolve this issue. The owner of the trucks went to force headquarters because he wants his trucks. But these people want their money. Now this Chinese is interested in the trucks. He wants his trucks. And yet he has not paid these people. These people have not been paid. And they are being owed money about how much in total? How many millions are we talking about? 53. Eh? 47 million in total. Because they are about 350. And in total we are talking about 35 million somewhere there. Now, they, he wants the trucks. But he hasn't paid them. And then he comes here. He goes to police so that these people can release the trucks. I want to commend the police at Force Headquarters. The commissioner there, these people are very happy with the way you handled the situation. 
they are very happy you handled it professionally i think this is where i must commend the new dawn at least I'm not doing politics, it's not me, it's themselves. They have told me that the police at Force Headquarters, they were very helpful and they are appreciative of what you did. An agreement was signed. This is the agreement which was signed between this director and, uh, and these people. The agreement was very clear, it's very clear here, that this man must pay them their money. Once he pays them, then the trucks can go and to calculate to compute how much they should be paid they were sent to labor office but this chinese instead of waiting for these people to go there he went there quickly thinking that he can corrupt the people at the at the labor office thank god to mrs moyo she acted very professionally they are appreciative They have told me how this man wanted to have a private meeting with you and you refused uh, uh, Mrs. Moore, isn't it? Yes. 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 They, you refused. That is very good. I think this is how it should be. People must have confidence in the government institutions and I'm very happy that you handled them very well. Unfortunately, the matter was not settled at Labor Office because this person, the, the director, the company has not brought the details of their work conditions and the leave days and how long they have saved for this company so because of that they couldn't agree how much really they are going to be paid but for them the drivers they know you know drivers when they are going out they have got manifest so they know where how much they are being owed they know how much they have worked they know the leave days unfortunately from the company's side from the company's side they haven't brought the, the issue. Instead, what they want, they seem to, they want to cut corners. They want to cut corners. Whilst they are trying to resolve issues at labor office, this Chinese ran to court and got an ex parte. He got an ex parte. Instead of agreeing at the labor office and pay these people, he rushes to court and got an ex parte injunction. An injunction so that these trucks can be released. I am actually happy also that it seems even the judiciary have handled this issue very well because they started with an ex parte, now it is an inter parte. And unfortunately, it is, the ball is in the court of this Chinese. He's the one who has to provide to answer to this ex parte. Legal aid is helping these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, drivers, which is very good. Now. What, what, is, what is the point here? The point I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to address here is this. Is that these people, these are vulnerable. Much as they are drivers, but they are vulnerable. They are vulnerable in the sense that they are fighting with their employer. Eh? The person that has employed them. Instead of giving them what is due to them, is busy trying to cut corners. He's busy moving from this, that, that. He wants to run away from paying them their money. This, this, uh, this Chinese it doesn't seem to want to pay these people. Instead, he's going from this place to that place. Instead of following what he was advised at Central, at the Force Headquarters to agree, to compute how much he must, he must pay these people and pay them, then he can get his tracks. But you can imagine the arrogance of some of these Chinese. He says, I would rather pay a judge than pay you. And this is why these people have called me, because now they are scared. They are scared that this man might corrupt the judge. I am very sure I know, I know uh, Judge Joshua Banda. I think this man is wrong. I know Judge Joshua Banda. I don't think he's a man that will sacrifice these people who have got families who are here struggling and because of a few coins i don't think he can do that i don't think he can do that and i want to take this opportunity to send a message to some of these chinese eh, who think that they can buy our judges you are wrong not in zambia not in zambia in zambia we don't buy judges our judges have got credibility our judiciary is solid 
and I'm sure this case, this case, let me not, because Nala could contempt number. Anyway, this case will be judged accordingly. The fear that they have, the fear that you have, you people, that no, the judge might be corrupted, I want to assure you. The judge cannot be corrupt in Zambia. Yeah. Eh? You, my brother, can see. The judge in Zambia cannot be corrupted. Nothing. So this guy, he can be bragging to say, no, I would rather pay a judge. He's dead wrong. You have got a right cause. It's your money. You worked for it. I must pay you. And they are scared that if they release the tracks, they will lose the money. And indeed, this should not happen. These people cannot release the tracks because these tracks are South African. If this guy gets the tracks, he takes them to South Africa. He's a Chinese. Do you think they will get the money? They can never get the money. They can never get the money. Therefore, I think the new dawn, so far, I think things have been very good, but I think you need to help these people. That's why I'm standing here as a public lawyer to encourage you to help these people. Make sure they get their money. Make sure these trucks don't go anywhere. Because if they go, the guy is Chinese. South Africa trucks are registered in South Africa, uh, you know, in South Africa. They will lose out. And it's a lot of money we are talking about. Some of them, on average, each of them is being owed about 300,000 kwacha. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. They can't just go. So please, let everyone, let everyone who will come across this case, look at the plight of these people. These people have got families. These people have been suffering. I've been working for these people, for these Chinese. They should not be neglected. They should be helped. I'll talk about it later on. Uh, but for now, let me just show you the trucks and what they are carrying. After they are carrying things. Eh? Let me just show you. These are the trucks. They are loaded with, with uh, things there. You see how far? Eh? There is, a, you see, South African trucks. You see there it goes. Eh? And this Chinese, he doesn't uh, think properly because he's delaying. These trucks are loaded. Eh? Look, eh? they are all South African registered trucks. If they leave, these people will lose money. There is the company. This is the company. Eh? Registered in Zambia and South Africa. Okay? They are go up to there. There are a lot of them. And they have got a just cause to keep these trucks because they have not been paid their money. Can anyone Anyone who come ac across this case, help out. Eh? Look what they are carrying here. Eh? These Chinese, I wonder why they behave like this. Anyway, this is the issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I think eh manje manje this is a big story eh let people know about this eh mubweleko kuno ba diamond eh ba movie tv bwerani muchiteko interview and this is a big story so that they should learn. Eh? I think I've made my point. I'll talk about it later on. For now, let me go back and see my wife. Bye. <laughs>